In-app purchases was a monumental change in the app market. Where you used to pay to use the app, now the majority of apps are free with additional features being sold separately. Hey there, this is Brian, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at in-app purchases and the human interface guidelines. But before we do, if you like these kinds of videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We would certainly appreciate the support. That said, it's not the wild, wild west when working with in-app purchases. In fact, Apple has some pretty strong rules on how in-app purchases are meant to behave. It essentially tells you what you can and what you can't do. Let's take a look at loot boxes. This is a purchase whereby a user gets a random, say, cosmetic. Typically, these cosmetics are valued at how rare they are. If you offer any loot boxes, you must disclose the odds of receiving each type of cosmetic prior to the purchase. But that's not all. If you have an app that contains any credits or currencies purchased through in-app purchases, those currencies cannot expire. If you want to unlock features in your app, you must use in-app purchases versus providing, say, external license keys and such from like another server. By all means, read the human interface guidelines as well as the App Store review guidelines. This is something you should do before you design your app so you can understand what is and really what is not possible with in-app purchases. And one last thing, let me just get on my soapbox for a moment. If you are adding in-app purchases, remember to put the user first and foremost. Our goal as developers is to provide value to our users as opposed to taking value from them. Aggressive in-app purchases drive people away from the market. Case in point, back in 2010, I was incredibly excited about the state of iPhone gaming. I used to buy a handful of games each month. As in-app purchases started appearing everywhere, I found myself buying and playing games less and less. I found these games being balanced around purchases and even games that I bought put the hard sell on me. In short, the in-app purchase store became the game. Now I only buy a couple of games a year and I make sure to review the, the in-app purchases in each game to avoid buying exploitative apps. So in summation, apps that treat me as a partner, I'm happy to reward with both time and money. What has been your experience with in-app purchases in the human interface guidelines? Do you find them too strict or should developers have more latitude on how to, put, how to apply these in-app purchases? Definitely let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Cheers.